Hello. So today is uh, it's going to be a good one, I think. Uh, the title of this uh, video is going to be uh, Vox Day, Owen Benjamin, and Bas Rutten, Rise of the Warlords. Because there's a trend happening. There's something that's happening that is um, kind of unusual, unexpected, and yet historically to be expected. So um, Owen did a, a stream, I think, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. My days sort of run one into the other about uh, with Vox Day. So Vox and Owen were talking on the stream. And then today uh, Owen had a short little video about um, his own sociosexual hierarchy. And it was a very good video because I've been thinking about the same sort of stuff and whatever. But, um, you know... Uh, let, let me just start off with one one little thing which which Owen also had, which I thought was funny. You know, th there's so many like similarities between the ways of thinking that Vox has, that Owen has, that I have. That is, it's um, there's kind of like a synergy there going on. You know, it's like I'll I find I'll do a video on something, and then the next day uh, Owen or Vox will talk about it. It's just it's kind of interesting. But you know, I I. Um, the social sexual hierarchy, it's really important to um, to explain that it's got like nothing to do with with game. You know, the original book, The Game, was uh, was written by these fucking nerds that just wanted to get laid and whatever. And it's just mostly it's bullshit. So-called pickup artists are like mostly scam scam artists. And, you know, they, they prey on on men really to sell them products that supposedly will get them laid and whatever and it's just you know anyway you know Rouge has changed and he's he's evolved and funnily enough I went to you know I kept tabs on this pickup artist guys and I went to a Rouge event in London because I'm you know I, I kind of have weird hobbies like one of my hobbies was to go to cults you know, I went to all sorts of different cultish type of things. I went to like weird evangelical churches. I went to Dianetics. I went to this uh, fraudster called Amma, you know, the hugging saint. And really, it was part of my, originally my curiosity later was my study of hypnosis and how people get hypnotized and brainwashed by these guys. So I also looked into the pickup artist guys and... When I saw Rouge, I, I wrote, I did a write up on Rouge on my blog, and uh, I sort of said, you know, this guy's moved on from just being a pussy hound sort of thing. And um, so it's really great to see that he's becoming Christian. And um, Bas Rutten uh, recently does a YouTube video if you do like Bas Rutten talks about his faith or something like that. And now Bas Rutten is like an awesome fighter. And it's really interesting. There's so many parallels there. You know, like he says, basically he became a fighter because he had such a crappy childhood. And um, and Owen was talking about, um, you know, how he's a bravo. He's not an alpha, never been an alpha, probably will never be an alpha. He's, that's that's his position. You know, that's the position he plays. And like how Sigma is, 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 is like Vox is a Sigma. You know, Bas, I don't know, Bas Rutten is, is hard to say because I haven't really watched a lot of him other than this little video about his faith and a, and a couple of other ones. One where he made fun of Steven Seagal. I mean, Steven Seagal is just a fat fucking idiot <laughs> who talks a lot of shit. And the weird thing is about 20 years ago, um, there was, uh, I think, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme came to Cape Town. Who, I was in Cape Town. One of the guys I knew... Um, he was the brother, one of the guys I worked with, a man with a small hat, by the way, said, I'm going to go look for Jean-Claude Van Damme. He's at the waterfront. I hear this at the waterfront. I'm going to go there and I'm just going to, I'm going to fight him. <laughs> We're like, what the fuck? You know, you're just going to end up in jail for what? Like, I'm just going to fight him just to prove to everybody I can take him out. It's just basic jujitsu. <laughs> you know, so those, those are the kind of people I used to hang out with and he didn't fight him, but you know, I always thought, like, I, I just always, I never liked Steven Seagal. You know, he's such a fucking arrogant idiot. I just thought, you know, what would it be like if you met that guy? You know, what if you just met him and you're just like, and he start talking shit? And I'd be like, Steven, shut the fuck up. You know, I'll bitch slap you, you know? And it's like, 
it's just funny how you know the same bus i think was something like he said something like what steven seagal like well, who's he talking about you know i don't know if, if seagal ran his mouth or something but i remember the the phrase that i remember is bus Rutten saying what oh just slap him like pa 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 and be done <laughs> you know, it was, yeah, so it was funny but anyway aside from the shit talking and all that i actually wanted to make a couple of serious points which was the you know the global homo the 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 fucking clown world that that it's become um and it's something that owen and vox discussed the other day it and, and you know i've been saying this for years basically the mental illness of freaks is now being allowed to spread because of the internet these people would never like do this like to your face before because they'd get beaten into a cupboard somewhere you know that get put into the closet literally and beaten if they stepped out too soon. So they'd learn to control their freaky shit, um, you know, and, and in polite society, they, they wouldn't dare to like mention the fact that, oh, you know, pedophilia is just another kind of sexual attraction. No, that would have got you killed. You know, there was a time when, when admitting that you were attracted to children sexually would have got you killed and rightly so, you know, and people say, oh, well, you know, but pedophiles are, you know they, they've been abused yeah you know it's true you know they've been abused but the thing is i've known people that have been sexually abused as kids i've known people that were women that were gang raped I've, I've known people that were like severely abused and they didn't uh they didn't turn out that way you know they they don't molest kids so it's still a choice now i'm not saying that you know it doesn't influence you or whatever you know that it obviously probably does but the thing is, you know, I am absolutely for the death penalty. And if it were up to me, you know, if I became emperor for a day, we, we would have the death penalty back for a whole bunch of crimes. Now, the, the level of proof would have to be very high. But if you've raped a little kid, you're stealing oxygen. You know, we can use you for compost. We can make something useful out of you. And it doesn't have to be letting you rape another kid, you know. So... There is a huge clown world around us right now, you know, like the, just the basics of society. I mean, like you, you can, you'll get a visit from the cops if you call Bruce Jenner, Bruce, fuck, fuck it, you know, fuck Bruce Jenner, not physically, you know, metaphorically, he's fucking Bruce Jenner. I'm never going to call that freak Caitlin, you know, it's just not going to happen. And if that means I'm going to go to jail or whatever, you know, tough shit, I'm, I'm not, I refuse to like bend reality for these fucking people and what's happening is that in lack of a coordinated leadership of any kind what's happening is leaders are springing up you know vox has made it sort of his mission in life i think to to have a cultural war and he's very meticulous he's very patient and uh i think as per the von Clausewitz uh, description, the Vox is general material. Vox is like a very much a strategist. And if you see it, the, the stuff is done, you know. I had one of these idiots, like um, one of these little gammas. I left him somewhere in the comments. I can't remember which video. Where he was saying, oh, you know, Vox is an idiot. He's achieved nothing. I said, oh, really? So Vox has started a competing um, thing to Wikipedia called Infogalactic which is fact-based instead of, you know, like lefty-based. It's just purely objective fact-based. And later down the line, you'll be able to select if you want to be see only the lefty stuff, you'll see only that. If you want to see only the righty stuff, you'll only see that. If you just want to see the facts, that's what you get. So he started that. Then uh, he's got, you know, he's involved in Castelia House, which produces some of the best and only remaining science fiction and... Um, probably going to say western civilization if he keeps printing uh, what, what he said he's going to do on his blog recently which is printing um b old books that are out of print you know that are out of um they copyright but that are still very um very much useful um, and there's plenty of those i mean there is one awesome book which i actually have here yeah so if you want to learn how neurology, phys physiology and all that works, get this. You, it's, uh, you can get it. It's one of the classics. Um, 
a reprint series. It's called The Meme by Richard Simeon. And this guy blows the, I mean, this book blows the crap out of, uh, you know, the neurophysiology that people have written now, you know. Um, he's also been most likely, very likely being plagiarized by uh, Richard Dawkins. Because Richard Dawkins' thesis um, professor was very familiar with this work. And um, you'll notice that uh, Richard Dawkins is famous for writing, you know, the, the, the famous book about um, memes and genes and whatever. And well, I think he kind of did a worse job of uh, what was in there. But anyway, the thing is, um, so Vox has done Infogalactic, he's involved in Castilla House as an editor. Um, he's launched Arc Haven, which has been the most successful print run of comic books that ever, I think, ever, honestly, from nowhere. The guy is now uh, one of the leading uh, comic book distributors and will be probably, I, I expect that Arc Haven is gonna end up becoming bigger than DC and Marvel if Fox keeps going. Uh, just because, again, of the global homo, you know, or men with small hats agenda that's destroying um, what used to be comic books. I used to read a bunch of comic books. I mean, my father is probably responsible for me being poor because, um, or, or rather, not wealthy, because we had a whole bunch of comic books and just threw them out when we left. And it's like, fucking hell, that we had thousands of the damn things, like, you know, really old ones that would be worth a lot of money now. But, uh, and they were great. You know, my favorite one, of, probably my favorite comic book was Jonah Hex. And it was awesome. I mean, you know, the scarred bounty hunter that just, he didn't hesitate. I mean, like, you just blinked the wrong way and he just shot me in the face. He's like my alter ego in comic book form, you know, except I've got a prettier face. Although, you know, you can start to see that, uh, what, what is it now? 15 years, more, I don't know, 20 years of putting a plaster on my face at night so I can breathe because uh, my nose got broken four times, you know, twice in training and twice on my own doing stupid stuff as a kid. So uh, I didn't, I never got it operated or whatever. I got a deviated septum. So I put a plaster every night and you can start to see it starting to form a, <laughs> a bit of a scar, but I still look prettier than Jonah Hex. And uh, you know, but we've got kind of similar reflexes and similar philosophies on life. And there were awesome comic books or the X-Men series where like uh, there was one where Cyclops had to take out all of the X-Men and that sort of showed you why Cyclops was the leader because even though his power was really only just that like optic blast, the way he thought and he, the way he knew the other guys meant he took all of them out. Um, and it was, you know, there were some really cool storylines. There were some really funny ones, the Justice League with... Um, Blue Beetle, where there was a period where it was really hilarious. And, you know, all this stuff is just dead by the wayside now because now we have to have a, a transsexual, lesbian, you know, Congolese superhero that, uh, I don't know, fights for the right to be fat or something. It, it's all going to crash down in flames. And um, I know some of the other projects Vox has got in the pipeline and they're brilliant. <laughs> I mean, so... You know, that guy is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, he moves like in huge sort of chunks. I'm sort of very much a background special ops type of guy. I've supported some of Vox's stuff pretty heavily, um, you know, materially. And um, I'd be, you know, I'm always willing to, to help with whatever he's got going on. Um, Originally, I was going to try and do a documentary for him, but it's just my time and, you know, I had a baby and so on. Moved the house again to, you know, it's just my life is a bit too, too busy and chaotic to devote the amount of time that I should, should have to that. So that project's happening uh, with other people now, which is, is for the best because they're definitely going to do a better job than I would have. I've done the, some of the basic research and on, but anyway, my point is, you know, Vox is a sort of cultural force. He moves in terms of affecting thousands and thousands of people's lives. Owen Benjamin is the same, although different. You know, Owen is a completely different creature to, to Vox, but his natural persona, his natural um, exuberance, his natural honesty, he's just blatantly 
honest to the point of 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 being you would almost think naive in that you know he's really exposes himself really well but his philosophy and it's a good one is like hey i'm here what you see is what you get and i don't have to hide anything and it, it's a, it's a brilliant strategy from you know like if you look at the two positions while vox is sort of the dark lord in the background who likes sends troops and has all sorts of things happening and then it's seemingly out of nowhere fully formed comes a vox army to like destroy the hugos <laughs> and he does you know it's just great owen is more like the barbarian king you know and he's like ah, we're just gonna take everybody out but really he'd be quite happy just being a farmer having more kids and being cool with his wife and you know talking with his neighbors that's really all he wants to do but it's like fuck you you're coming after me and my family i'm gonna fucking destroy you and that's kind of what he does I'm something in between. I'm like, I don't know. And and I was also talking, thinking about, you know, like what Owen was saying about the social sexual hierarchy and he discussed, you see, I knew this about the guy. He discussed his friendships when he, you know, from his hometown and a lot of Italians there and, and you could just tell because, and he says, you know, strong Catholics as well because nobody talked about Jesus. Nobody sort of went to church, but like they all had it in them. It's like a, you know, like, like a kind of correcting guide. Now, I never had Catholicism in me at all because I didn't get raped by any priest. And um, also, I um, kind of rejected it when I was seven years old. I think I've told the story before. But uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's really a long loop because, it, and what Bas Rutten said in that video, look for that video. What Bas Rutten said is that like people think, oh, it's not interesting. Oh, it's boring. Oh, I don't want to read the Bible. It's, it's well, who cares? It's an old book. And people think that. And it's true. They think that. But they think that because that's what they've been told. And that's what they've had to sit through. The fake Catholic Church brainwashing you with bullshit. You know, the pedo priests and all that stuff. But if you pick up that book and you start reading it, it's the most rebellious, you know, revolutionary I mean, Jesus was like, the more he turned the world upside down, rightly so, because remember, we are in the upside down. So by turning it upside down, he turned it right way up. So it's, uh, it's, it's really good. But what's happening is that these people are naturally springing up and it's a force of nature and you can't stop it. You know, so you've got a bass root that converts to Catholicism or goes back to Catholicism rather, and recognizes that it was always there. Even when he wasn't there, it was always there. It was always with him. And even the hardship he had to go through as a kid was all to form him to become who he became. And now he's spreading the faith. Um, Owen, again, you know, Owen, I know Owen is, is searching to, you know, between, but it's really good that, you know, I'm not worried about Owen. Owen is seeking and who seeks will find. So whether it becomes Russian Orthodox, which I thought about seriously as well before before uh, getting baptized, I was I looked seriously into Russian Orthodox. I've got a lot of Russian friends. I trained in Russian the Russian system for years. Um, had a, quite a few Russian girlfriends, and you know I I, I studied and, and read and like obsessively for like um, for f four years before I got baptized. Uh, and I had been studying and reading up, not obsessively, but, you know, for a few years before that. But after I had my road to Damascus moment, it was just like, it's like anything that interests me when, when that happens. It's like, I don't stop until I've got everything that I want to get out of it. And, you know, with Christianity, it never ends. So it's never going to end. And uh, I read into it, read into it, read into it. But the thing that I found was, you know, the way I see it is like, Orthodoxy has got more mysticism and they explain less. And mysticism is valid. True Christian mysticism is a valid way of interpreting God or the parts of God you can interpret because it's wordless and it uses a different type of logic, a higher kind of logic that doesn't require necessarily maths, doesn't require necessarily words. It's more of a sensation but it's not just a stupid ephemeral feeling it's a it's a truly divine instinct almost and there is much to be said for that catholicism um, also has the the logic 
logos, logic, the reason and the thought out almost to the point of, of OCD level of, well, if this, then this must be true. And if this must be true, then this must be true. And it's a very logical progression. If you read the doctors of the Catholic Church, there's some amazing thinkers there. And, um, you know, again, that appealed to me too. Both sides appealed to me. The thing is that Catholicism also has uh, mysticism as well. Um, it's You have to go a lot deeper than you do in than Russian mysticism. So to give a sort of, a, I don't know, a, a basic example, you know, a Russian would, you know, say in the street or whatever, you're walking along and some rude guy is just, you know, a bit drunk and pushes you and tries to punch you, you know, Russian Orthodox might just bang, knock him out, leave him on the floor. And you know, maybe when he's out, maybe puts him in a recovery position, maybe not, hey, walks off. Somebody asks him, but you know, how could you do that? You know, you're a Christian, you hit the guy. And he goes, how do you know that that was a bad thing? How do you know my knocking him out was a bad thing? How do you know that? Are you God? Do you know that? No, you don't know that. He attacked me. He must and Russian saying, right? Everything happens for a reason. He attacked me. It must be for a reason. A reason is so he can get knocked out and that will be good for him somehow. I don't know how. It's not my problem. It, it's between him and God. But it's you that punched him. No, I'm just, uh, it was me or the next guy, you know. It was better tool, that's all. Mysticism, right? Now a Catholic, that happens, it'll be like, no, but sir, you know, let me try and help you and and especially if he's a church and Catholic, he'll be like, well, you know, um, let me, or he'll get hit and he'll just take it because turn the other cheek. That's bullshit. That's kind of fake Catholic, okay? Proper Catholic, crusader type Catholic, you know, the drunk guy again tries to punch you, bang, hits him, doesn't knock him out because he wants him to learn and be awake and say, hey, now you're going to get another one on the other side unless you apologize. He wants to educate him. You know, wants, wants him to learn the reason. And uh, that's, that's the difference. And the other guy, oh, I was drunk. Uh, bang, another slap. Wake up. Wake up, because I'm not leaving. I got all evening. I got no, nowhere to be. I'll give you another one. Till you sober up, apologize, and learn what you did wrong. Oh, well, okay, I'm sorry. All right, now be on your way. Stop drinking. And don't take it out on your wife, or I'll come to your house. Uh, you know where I live. That's right. I know where you live. You know, and that's the mysticism at the end. Knowing that the guy is so drunk that he will believe you when you say that you know where he lives. You know, <laughs> but uh, so those are kind of two different approaches. But really, it's the same sort of road. And besides, I I really like the 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 Catholic art. You know, it was it was great. Um, and the Catholic monks. And also one of the other things that swayed me is the Catholics did a lot more to uh, retain Christendom than the Orthodox. Um, they fought the Saracens, the Crusades, the Knights of Malta. You know, there's a long, long history of Catholic warriors keeping at bay the forces of evil, if you like, uh, and darkness. And monks, um, you know, going through extreme hardship to save works of art, books, knowledge that would have otherwise been lost. Uh, the Orthodox also did that, you know, that I'm not trying to take anything away from them. But um, I did certainly look at the Orthodox, Russian Orthodox um, Christianity, but ultimately I felt Catholicism was more where I felt at home. And of course, it, what disturbed me was all the, the, the pedophilia and the fake uh, priests and so on. But then I found out, you know, as I've done on the videos uh, on the church, video number one and video number two or three, I think, it's video number one on the church. So if you if you want to know about what the real Catholic Church is, it's ten minutes. It's there, and and I, when I when I realized that's what the situation is, you know that Bergoglio is just a, a fake pope, and all the clerics that believe Vatican II are completely fake. They're not even Catholic. Um, then I realized, oh oh okay, Catholic Church is still there, and it is the right one, the good one. Okay, cool. And that's it. I was done. You know, then I got baptized by a proper priest, hardcore priest, good priest. And, uh, and that's that. And I, too, in my own way, not as overt as, as Owen and not as uh, widespread as Vox. But, um, you know, I do my things like uh, I give support 
behind the scenes sometimes. And I'm extreme, and that, so in a way you could sort of say, well, I'm sort of behind the scenes and I give support behind the scenes to a different all sorts of things. And on the other hand, I'm also very much in your face. You know, there was a question on one of the Facebook groups about this lady said, oh, what do you do if you're at a wedding where there is um, a homosexual, a transgender, and, you know, a person that doesn't believe in marriage at all, and they're at the wedding ceremony, but they're saying, oh, well, you know, what's even the point of this wedding ceremony? And you're the only Christian there, and how do you react to that? And I was like, I've been in that situation. Now, one of my really good friends, uh, we've been friends since we were in, in high school, and she got married. Uh, she got married in Switzerland in a really beautiful place on top of a mountain. And she invited all her friends from back in school. So, you know, we, we, there was, I don't know, probably a dozen people or more from Botswana, of all places, flew to Switzerland just for a wedding. You know, that's the kind of friendships and people that she's, she's really great at keeping in touch with people and everything. So we were there and, um, you know, we, we, there, there was so many people. I think there was like 80 people. You, you had tables, you know, you sat at different tables with different people and all from different backgrounds and whatever. And we had that. And, you know, I sat there with my wife and um, um, there was a, the group of people that we were sat with was sort of kind of all the random spare ones or whatever. And there was a very liberal guy. I don't know if he was gay or whatever. I, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I don't care. And he started to make some comments, you know, like, and then I said, well, if you want my opinion, you know, better brace yourself. And you're like, no, no, I do. You know, I go, I want your opinion. And, you know, my statement to that sort of stuff, you know, like the homosexual, the transgenders, that I don't believe in marriage, all that. I was like, well, you know, I'm a Catholic, but not like the ones you know. I believe we should start burning people at the stake again. And all the kind of freakery shit. Yeah, you, you, you do that out in public, you should be burnt at the stake now. I'm not saying that all homosexuals should be burnt at the stake. Some of them are really good people that just have a big problem. You know, we should help them. There should be a solution. There should be a way for them to, to heal. And they should try and remain celibate, which is difficult. You know, I understand the, 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 the impetus for last sex. And when you've been messed with as a little kid and totally rewired your sexuality and that, it's got to be fucking difficult, you know. I feel for those people. I feel for, for gay people. But the minute that you start to strip off trying to do a gay parade, flash your dick in front of kids and try and go as a transgender to talk to little kids in schools and teach them about anal sex when they're five years old. Yeah, that guy should be burnt at the stake as far as I'm concerned. You know, I'm not telling you to go and burn him at the stake. I'm saying the laws should change so that we bring back burning at the stake because it's a very civilizational uh, thing. You know, unfortunately, most people are complete fucking idiots. And they need rules, you know. Um, and the table sort of went quiet. It's like, oh well. And they sort of changed topic. There you go. You know, I've expressed my opinion. You know, I've always had this theory as well. You know, people that internalize. You know, the gamma, the gamma hate, they internalize their anger and they internalize their bad feelings, and then they do passive aggressive shit. And I was like, what? What kind of fucking idiot? You know, what kind of life must you live? You know, I've been saying this since I was 16. You know, people say, oh, you've got a short temper. I'm like, no, I don't have a short temper. I've got a very proactive reaction to bullshit. You know, like the, like the e-card thing. I don't have a short temper. You're just fucking stupid. And I'm not. So my brain works 10 times your speed. So the, the shit that you do is irritating me. It's, it's irritating as hell. But, you know, that, that's, that's all it is. And uh, I've, I've been saying that since, since I'm 16. Don't keep it in. You know, I don't keep all my shit in. I give it out. Give the shit out. Fertilizes the world. Leaves me in a better place. And hey, if it upsets you, fuck you. Because you probably deserve it. Because you probably the reason that I had to get some shit out. You know? So, um, in, in all of this, the, the, the point... And, and, you know, again... I realize that this sounds sort of ranty and disjointed, but it isn't. It's just that my loops are a bit longer than normal. So like I did the other video that I think it's video number 20 or whatever, where I basically explained what flashed through my brain in about a minute. And it took me like 35 minutes to explain it. So I'm going to try and uh, I've done a bit of that now. Now I'm going to try and compress it again. So there's these natural Christian warlords 
That's what I think of them as because they are affecting an area of the population. And they're not doing it by going out there killing, maiming and murdering. They're doing it by ideas, by their voice, by their work, by the books they produce. Uh, which reminds me, I finished this book, I need to get it out. I need to just get the time to finish the, the cover and all that stuff and, and put it out there and I will. But um, there is just a natural upwell of faith, Christian faith, and men just taking a stand. And, you know, it's important. It's very, very important. You know, if you're a young guy and you're a bit agnostic and you're not sure, man, I'm telling you, just pick up the Bible. Never mind the Old Testament, right? Because the Old Testament is pretty big and in essence, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to reduce it to this because it's kind of unfair. But to a certain extent, you could say that the whole of the Old Testament was just a sequence of prophecies predicting the arrival of Jesus. And the New Testament is when he arrived and what he did here. Start with that, you know, start reading the Gospel of Mark, which is the shortest one. Um, just read it. Don't, don't try and look anything into it. Don't try and like find anything into it. Just just read it by yourself. Just get I suggest, you know, if you're a little bit of a nerd, like, like I am sometimes, um, I think the Bible's wrong in the front room, but I, I found it really useful to get an interlinear, a Greek interlinear New Testament, because you get a lot more out of the original words in the original language and seeing how they're placed, you know, so you've got actually three lines. You've got sort of the English common way of, of having translated it, the original Greek and then the English word for word below that. And when you read the English as we speak it and you read the English word for word in the Greek format, it sometimes very often gives you a different flavor of the thing. Another really, oh man, I'm, yeah, the really, I think, are at the front. Aren't they? Another really brilliant book is called um, The Cloud of Unknowing, written anonymously, I think, in the 13th century by a monk. And it's amazing. I get the penguin, I think it's a penguin translation. It's got some kind of like pink cloud thing on the on the on the front, sort of yellow border, yellow, very light yellow border. Get that translation because it's the best one. Um, and that's in sort of modern English. But then go online and download it. It's free, you know, it's it's a PDF because it's out of out of copyright. The cloud of annoying in the original Middle English and read the two side by side, and it's astonishing. You need both because the, the new English lets you understand fully what the, what the old English was saying, but the old Eng English uses words in a way that is so much more penetrating, deeper and richer, and uh, gives a true sense. I didn't know that the English language could do that. You can do that in Italian. Um, a lot more, even even in vernacular Italian, you can do that a lot more than, you know, generally you can in English. But, you know, those, you know, three or four guys left that can actually speak proper, educated Italian can really go very deep. And there was, um, I'm reminded of a, of a piece of work, which is um, from uh, Sodalitium Piano, the, the guys that I got baptized with. They've got on their website, they've got this little uh, booklet, which you can also buy, but it's also free online, called a, a Brief Criticism of the Novus Order Mass, or a Brief Criticism of the, of the Novus Order Mass, something like that. And I bought the original in Italian. And, uh, oh my God. I mean, you know the Irish have that saying where they say like, the intent is to tell somebody to fuck off in such a way that they they think they're going to enjoy the journey. Well, let me tell you, proper, what I'd call high Italian, you know, like Elvish, you've got like high Elvish and then you've got low Elvish and then you've got Orkish, which they speak in the South. Um, you know, high Italian, it's, it's very few people that can speak, read and write it. But um, high Italian is... It's like a rapier through the neck while, while sort of surrounded by 
rose petals and the light of heaven. You know, it's kind of like in a very beautiful, almost poetic way, they skewer the the the, the vileness, the idiocy. They 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 point it out in such a way that you can't help but you know, but but notice the the absurdity that the Novus Order Mass is, is and what a sham it is and what a a decrepit, you know, insult uh, to our Lord, uh, the, the, the new fake masses. But they do it in such a way that you can't help but laugh at the beauty of it. It's a little bit um, like a refined um, G.K. Chesterton. If you've ever read Chesterton, and I'm, I'm really sorry I've never read anything by Chesterton before I became Christian, because I think Chesterton is one of those writers that might convert you just by just by reading his stuff. I'd read C.S. Lewis and I wasn't impressed. You know, I know a lot of people put a lot of stock stock in C.S. Lewis, and that's another thing that I, I realized not too long ago actually about Vox, and he admitted it himself. He's he admitted he's an intellectual snob. You know, and the thing is, um, he is, but it's not. You know, you can't hold a man to fault for that. He's an intellectual snob because he likes language and he likes the play of words. And, you know, for example, a book that he published um, called The Missionaries, written by one of his uh, Castelia House authors. Uh, Vox said that's the funniest book he's ever read. And I'm like, one of the funniest books he's ever read. And I'm like, I read it and I was like, ah. you know, this guy's just kind of telling a story about like, what it's like, you know, I've lived through most of the stuff in one way or another in Africa. It's like, it's not even, I don't even think it's that funny. It's sort of, you know, it's just a story about what's actually happening. But, you know, the, the point wasn't the story. For me, the point is always the story, you know. The point wasn't the story. The point was the language and the way it's told and the subtle sarcasm and the very British sort of sense of humor. Uh, the irony is in it, and that's what Vox enjoys. And um, I'm always a lot more about the content, the meat of the story, you know. My father wrote the book called um, Life and Death in Africa. So it's got my same name, my same surname. Uh, Life and Death in Africa. It's a brilliant book. I mean, when he first sent me the first draft of that thing, it was illegible because it was written in phonetic English with an Italian grammar. I mean, it was absolutely, you know, I could read it and I could understand what's going on because I know him and I've known him all my life and I know his mind. But, but any English speaking person would have just thought it was, you know, like, what's that that book like um, that nobody has the foil, foil manuscript? No one's, no one's deciphered it. It was something along those lines. So I tried to clean it up a bit and then I thought that... I, honest to God, I don't have the time. I, there's no way I can do this. I'll pass you on to my editor, but she might just tell you to fuck off because it's like, you know, it's really, I'm not exaggerating. It was phonetic English, mostly phonetic English with with Italian grammar. I gave it to my, to my editor and she looked at it and she said, I, I've got to charge proper rates for this. You know, I've got to charge like my, my real rates. I can't give a discount on this one. I told my dad and he said, that's fine. And she edited it. But I swear to God, I think he broke my editor. Now, my editor was like, I don't know. I mean, you think Nazis were hardcore? This girl was, she would fucking go on for three pages in an email about a split infinitive. And I'd be like three pages right back saying, I don't give a fuck about split infinitives. They're fucking bullshit. Nobody cares. I don't give a shit. And no, don't change my fucking sentence because there's a, comma there for a reason, because when you're speaking, that's where you'd pause. To which, and I quote, she said, breath commas are the devil. That's what she said. And I was like, fuck you, I'm, I'm leaving my breath commas in because I need them sometimes. And people read, if you read with the punctuation that I put in, it gives you a completely different understanding of the book, of the characters. You're destroying my art. Nevertheless, she did make me a better writer. Uh, but I think my dad's book broke her. And because after she finished, I went through the last few chapters and there was I, I was finding just mistakes that she would never have let slip before. You know, I think she probably bled from the eyes until she was blind. 
and, uh, and, and did the job. But all that said, the book is absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. It's one of the most hilarious, interesting books I've ever read. And I read it in two days flat. And, and it's my dad. And I've lived with him through most of those stories in the book. Almost all of them I was part of or with him or, or knew about it or lived through it or was in the background or know the other half of the story that he can't put in the book that I do know, you know, all that stuff. And it's just, it's brilliant because the content is good. You know, the, the, the way it's written is very simple. You know, the English is very simple. There's no huge, big, long words or run-on sentences like I tend to have. But again, I have run-on sentences, not because I'm an intellectual snob, but because I can't fathom that other people's brain is just so fucking shriveled that you can't handle a sentence that goes on for a whole paragraph. And by the way, this used to be very common in the 1800s or the 1700s because people could still read and think. Nowadays, it's like, oh, is it like more than three emojis? Because I can't handle it. So for me, the content is always more important than the, the way it's expressed. So very different ways of being, doing, and so on. But yet, all have the same aim, you know? Make kids, protect Christendom, create Christendom where it's fallen, uh, where it's gone by the wayside, rebuild, rebuild it. I mean, you know, my, my dream, if I had more time on earth because it would take me more time on earth i would take back venice and i had started that uh, as a little pilot program and it's still sort of going on in the background you know i've got a guy out there who's um trying to get into the political system to to become somebody in venice and he's very he's not unfortunately he's a little bit similar to me in that he's a little bit impatient but he's also more patient than i am for certain things so I hope if, if he gets a position out there, that's the intent, you know, make Venice a republic again and make it an independent city state again. Because in the future, now pay attention, this is what's going to happen, especially for you Americans. Your country's fucked. You're going to have not one civil war, you're going to have multiple civil wars and it's going to split up. How bad, how good it is, I don't know, it depends where you are and so on. It's going to get pretty bad though, because in some places, certainly, because... Uh, people are going to feel insulted about this. And I'm not talking about the Owen Benjamins of America. Because those guys are an America that I have very rarely seen. Okay, I've seen little hints of it here and there. Um, but they, you know, the cities are going to be hell. The places where the militarized... Um, men in small hats and global homos elite forces of, of force you know whether army police whatever those guys are going to be brutal they're going to be absolutely brutal when the shit hits the fan and i think you guys have already seen little bits of this during things like the um the katrina uh, cyclone and stuff and apparently there were cops doing all sorts of evil shit so and you know remember a cop is just a guy with a gun you know so when the shit hits the fan, he's a threat. He's a guy with a gun. He's not, you know, going to do law and order when everything else has fallen down around your ears. But it's the, the best, I think the best solution or the best situation for governing of human beings is city states. I truly believe that city states is it because in a way they're a little bit like a, a contained ecology, you know, so you, you can have all the hardcore Catholics, uh, sailors that love the sea and, you know, are willing to fight anybody, including their neighbor. And if they run out of people to fight with, maybe somebody in their family, because that's just how they are. Venetians, that's, that's it. If you want to, if you can handle that, then you go to live in Venice. If you can't handle that and you want to be a bit more artistic and you're still Catholic and you're still Christian, but, you know, a bit more argumentative, but more with your hands and more from far away then you go and live in Florence, you know? And if you're kind of like, fuck America, man, and we're gonna just build America here in our little city, then, you know, go to Gig Harbor where, where, uh, where Owen is and you'll build a, a strong little community, which by the way, all of these different communities, 
all these little city states of Christianity would become absolutely friends. They would they would definitely trade. They would definitely support each other. And my my thing was there is a very realistic possibility of making Venice back into an independent um, state or city city. Um, there is a very real you know from a practical point of view it's very doable very doable so if there's any multimillionaires out there you know that want to fund me uh it wouldn't even take that much you know probably a couple of million would would let me move to italy and and uh, live there to try and influence the whole the whole city and you know if you have the right leverage in the right places and I believe I could get that. Venice could definitely become a city state. And then if you get the endorsement of, say, you know, somebody like Donald Trump, all it would take is one tweet from Donald Trump saying, I support the Venetian Republic that is trying to form, you know. That's it. You, you're in. Because then you say, okay, we're going to trade now. And we want to get rid of, you know, Italy. And what, what I would even do if I, if I would suddenly become Doge of Venice tomorrow, I would say, right. We keep the revenue from the tourism, but we will pay a tax. We will pay a tax to Italy for the infrastructure, for the other things it's done for us and blah, blah, blah. We will pay a yearly tax of 500 million euro every year. No problem. We would pay that tax to whoever's running Italy, you know, and the only stipulation we would have is it mustn't go to the pockets of any politicians. It must go to building infrastructure in Italy, schools, proper schools, real Catholic churches, and clearing out the Vatican of the pedophiles. So we'll give you 500 million euro a year, no problem. In fact, I'm pretty sure you could probably push that to 1 billion euro a year. And I've thought this all through and I've done the numbers, so it would work. And Within a couple of years, you'd have crystal clear canals, no more fucking sewage in the water. Yeah, that's what could be done if people only had the will. So that would be my city state. So pick your own, right? <laughs> Mind you, if you're going to sponsor me to the tune of a few million euro, I'll make you a citizen. You know, you, you can get a citizenship. You can still get citizenship for... for um, honorable and uh, calls above and beyond the call of duty, you know, honorable uh, help to the Serenissima Republic of, uh, of Venezia, the most serene Republic of Venice, La Serenissima, as we call it. So there you go. City states is the way to go. Warlords are rising. Logos is rising. And the interesting thing is none of us are doing it for ourselves. I'm not in this for any money, neither does Owen, neither does Fox, neither does Bas Rutten. Some of us made more money, some of us will make more money, some of us won't. Some of us will get thrown in jail and killed. You know, um, some of us will, I don't know, maybe just preach. Some of us will become monks and have a following. But it's happening. It's happening. So, you know, Owen has got his bears. Um, Vox, much smaller uh, number of followers, has got his vile, faceless minions. I'm the Kurgan, and I've got a very tiny following. But then, we're immortals. So, those of you that feel like uh, joining forces, um, drop me an email. You can, uh, you'll have to figure out how to do that, if you don't already know, or drop a comment. And know that you will be tested because I'm not Owen and I'm not Vox. And I don't care if I don't have a single guy that's on my side of the fence. But if I do have somebody on my side of the fence, his loyalty better be unquestionable. I'm also not going to treat you like a vile, faceless minion. So, you know. I tend to look after my men if I'm leading them into battle. Um, you know, so does Vox. I'm not suggesting otherwise. But um, you won't just be a faceless minion. If you want to join forces with me, go ahead. But uh, 
three important points. Know who you are. Okay, that's that's pivotal. Know yourself. You have to know who you are. You have to know what social sexual rank you are. You have to know if you're an omega, a sigma, a delta, whatever. Know it. Own it. Don't shy away from it. Don't pretend. I have no interest in any gammas. Gammas can fuck right off. I can't use them. I won't use them. And I kind of want to set them on fire and put an axe in their head whenever I get anywhere near them. So, you know, help me to control my urges. Um, omegas generally are not reliable. So, lambdas I want nothing to do with. Although, uh, you know, like Vox, I have a very uh, wide variety of friends. And there is a lambda that I, that I know who's been extremely loyal, who's uh, helped me a lot in many little different things, um, and who I consider a friend, a good friend. Because you have to remember, you know, despite the fact that I'm saying, you know, freaks should be burnt at the stake, a homosexual, ultimately, in my mind, is somebody who simply has a flaw. Uh, whether it's because they were abused as kids, whether they were born that way, it's sort of irrelevant, you know. And... While externally, you know, you, you have to take certain steps to prevent certain things. Internally, I don't judge homosexuals. I don't, I don't think, oh, you know, you, you're going to burn in. I mean, I'm flawed. I've got plenty of flaws. And I've lived probably a, a life that even though I've always been completely heterosexual, probably close, almost as close to depraved as, as, uh, as gay people have been, you know, in their sexual practices or whatever because i you know i like women and i like them a lot and you know shit happens sort of thing but um you know i've, I've certainly indulged in a lot of um, lust put it that way um you know never never with a bad intent or anything but certainly gone through a lot of women and um that i didn't intend on being with or anything like that uh, so, you know, I, again, I'm not judging. It's a flaw, you know, like somebody is a thief. He might be a really nice guy and other things. He might be a really good dad, but he's a thief. You know, he has to cure that. We all have something. We all have many demons. We all have many things wrong with us. And by the way, on that note, a really good book. Damn it, man. All my, yeah, all my theological stuff is in the front room. And a really good book is called The Three Battlegrounds. Now, it's not by Catholic. It's by a, you know, a Protestant of some sort. But the first three chapters, for certain, are unbelievably good. If you want to learn how to discipline yourself, control yourself, become a better Christian, know how to get rid of your demons, read that. The three battlegrounds. You know, the last few chapters are, they don't really apply. I don't, I don't think they're that interesting. But the first three chapters, for certain, they're absolutely awesome. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. So get that. And um, I've been going nearly an hour. It feels like a couple of minutes, but I don't know. And it's hard to judge sometimes whether something is interesting or not for you guys. But uh, I hope you find it interesting. Anyway, uh, so to recap. Warlords are rising with Logos. The Kurgan has his immortals, or will have his immortals, if they're worthy. So let me know. Because there's a lot of projects that I'm, I'm doing and have to do and want to do that require more than one man. And, uh, you know, it would be good to, to have a little team that I can rely on. Because remember, Vox plans to take over the world. Owen plans to control his dominion which which won't be the whole world i just want to be left alone and do my own thing but in order to do that i'm willing to you know do whatever do do the things that are just unexpected and change the course of history because nobody even knows who did it how they did it and what happened but there are singular events that uh, that push history one way or the other and that's where i try and uh, have an effect so, uh, but as one person, you can only limit that. You, you need a team. So, um, 
there's there's plenty of projects and interesting stuff we could do so you know let me know like i said drop me a line and remember that you will be tested you're not going to be accepted right away you're going to be treated like the dog shit that you are in order to see if you can climb the ranks because we have to filter out for the gammas and we have to filter out for the lambdas and we have to filter out for the omegas and we have to filter out for the you know whatever the 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 deltas that are just not really going to be like special ops material we have to filter out for the sigmas which are always a pain in the ass and i speak knowing what that's about because i know myself and um so there's a lot of filtering out but remember i'm catholic so although there are very hard rules very firm rules god might always have an exception and he has a funny sense of humor so you never know if you think you got it in you let me know and uh, i'm also putting it at the end because it's interesting to see who watches all the way through but uh, yeah, that's, um, I think that's about it. Although there's a whole bunch of other stuff I wanted to say about the, yeah, the social sexual hierarchy is really, oh yeah, that was it. So the social sexual hierarchy is really interesting because it's nothing to do with game anymore. So originally game was about, you know, getting with women, but Vox applied those patterns of rankings between men in the greater scheme of things which doesn't have anything to do necessarily with uh, with sex although you know different ranking men will have different sexual experiences so and will have different access to the opposite sex and um, you know it's absolutely true what Owen says about like these guys in Hollywood that like you know they're multimillionaires and, and they have no clue They'll just get drunk and, and like expose themselves to some woman and just start like masturbating in front of her. It's just like fucking gamma through and through. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much power you have. You will never have it, you know. And uh, there's so many little funny stories from that. <laughs> you know, I've always been a proponent of the fact that I, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how good a fighter you are. I don't care you know, how much power you wield. I don't care about any of that. The only thing that matters in the world is balls. I've got mine. And there's no balls like mine in the world. So, you know, you could be better than me at just about everything. But you don't have my balls. I've got my balls. So, and you know, that attitude and that, and it's not an attitude it's i believe that absolutely because i don't care who you are you know you could be an emperor piss me off enough you know do something that is crosses a certain line it doesn't matter who you are everybody can be touched and that's kind of how I measure things. You know, that's where my brain functions most of the time, which is an interesting seg into what Owen was saying about sigmas and um, and what Vox was saying about bravos. You know, like they were talking about economics and how um, Vox said, you know, the Ricardo theory and, and Owen said, well, you see, instead of trying to explain the whole Ricardo thing, I would probably just say Ricardo, Ricardo. And that works. It works on a very huge rhetorical level. You know, and I'm, um, I'm, I can be as detailed as Vox in the stuff that interests me, but then of course nobody else knows what the hell you're talking about because it's raw dialectic and it just, um, but my rhetoric is more like stab you in the face with an ax. And the joke is the blood splatters on the other people, you know, so it's, and when I do that sort of stuff, and you can do it without the actual act of violence, obviously, you know, I'm talking metaphorically, but, you know, when, when you're in a, in that, like I said, the polite setting where like, you know, the transgender, the homosexual and the, the pagan all say, well, you know, we don't need marriage. And what do you think? And I'm like, I think you should all be burnt at the stake for heresy. You goddamn freaks. And I'm not joking, by the way. I'm just polite, which is why I'm not going to do it at my friend's wedding. As far as I'm concerned, you all should be burnt at the stake in the town square as an example 
so that others learn to curb their vicious, disgusting behavior. You pass the salt, please. You can hear a pin drop after I do that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, some people that are intelligent enough have learned to understand that <laughs> that's kind of my sense of humor too, you know. But I'm not really joking, am I? Or, or am I? <laughs> and, uh, and the other day we were coming home and it was... Honest to God, can't remember what it was. It was something like, I don't know, I can't remember. If it comes back to me, I'll tell you. But it was a, it's like my wife said something where, um, uh, I think maybe it was about the kids at school or something, you know. And they said, oh yeah, they're gonna, you know, they, they might have to do this or, or like, oh, we have to think about schools. You know, I, I can't remember. Something about along the, or maybe we were talking about the, the sort of, the, the fact that um, transgenderism and lesbianism or whatever is being is going to be taught at schools and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, no, that, that's not going to happen. You know, that's not going to happen in any schools that we send any of our kids to. And she's like, well, you know, but uh, how would you go about it? I'd just be like, I'd go talk to the principal. And she'd be like, but, you know, honey, we need you. We can't afford for you to go to jail. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to go to jail. You know, and even if I go to jail, you know, There'll be other people coming to get me out. It's like, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, it's not about what would you say? It's like, I'd just go talk to the principal. I'd go discuss things with him. I'd go and tell him that that stuff is not going to be taught to my child and it should mean the school and he'll stop doing it. Because I'll, I'll ask him nicely and he'll, he'll stop doing it. That's all. I'm a very charming guy when I want to be. And she burst out laughing. <laughs> saying, what? You know, I said, what, don't you believe me? I mean, you know, you married me after all, so I must have something charming, you know. And she goes, yeah, I, I just don't think it would go that way. I mean, I know my husband. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she might be right. But I still think that, um, you know, the thing is you have to stand up for what you believe. You have to. You can't just let these people walk on you or, or push you in a corner you know fuck them fuck them there's a lot more of us than there is of them so you know be intelligent don't be dumb don't do anything stupid don't do violence you know uh, unless you have to defend yourself you know from from violent people or whatever then you know all bets are off obviously or as my dad always says better to be tried by 12 than carried by six so but um you know, the point is you don't need to go to any extremes. All you got to do is resist. All you got to do is support the stuff you like, support the unauthorized TV, support the Arkhaven comics, support the books that people like me and Vox and others like us write. Read, read G.K. Chesterton. Uh, it's, he's funny. He's hilarious. Chesterton was brilliant, a brilliant man, because he'll start out with a sentence that is so obnoxiously weird that you're like, what the hell are you talking about? You're absolutely wrong. This can't be right. And like three sentences later, you're like, oh, he was right all along. You know, it's genial. Um, read up on people like Tesla. Read up on people like Thomas Townsend Brown. Read up on the work that people like Thomas Bearden, retired lieutenant uh, army, uh, army lieutenant retired I believe I spoke to him on the phone once 20 years ago um, I was wanted to fund some of his stuff with uh, some investors that that I was working for as a bodyguard unfortunately the investors turned out to be con men who like ran away with 65 million back to Israel um, they were partial to wearing small hats and uh, they ripped off a bunch of their own people so it's true what Owen says some big Big small hats eat the little small hats, you know. So, uh, okay, I think that's about it. It's probably quite late, uh, so I'm gonna go off to bed. Good night.